now we shall be going over these ones, which I'm pretty freaking excited about. Because it's Elementalist, Deadeye, which is whatever, Slayer, which I'm interested if I was right or wrong about what they're going to be changing. Occultist, which is pretty freaking hype. Trickster, whoa, Trickster looks crazy! Okay, pretty hyped up for Trickster too, and obviously my favorite class, Necromancer. Ah, uh, they placed Beacon. Oh, they changed this. Okay, I don't even want to say anything anymore. Alright, boys. Best for last, Elementalist. Alright, so, new Elementalist. Can we... Paragon of Calamity, my dudes. Wait, did they change this at all? I'm pretty sure this was the same before. Yeah. Paragon of Calamity. 0.5 of elemental damage leashed as life. Elemental damage. Any elemental damage. Nice. For each element, you've been hit by damage of recently. 40% increased damage of that element, so that's the old one. For each element, you've been hit by recently. 8% reduced damage taken of that element. Pretty sure that's exactly the same as it was. And then damage cannot be... Cannot take reflect damage. Oh, cannot take reflect damage, just in general. Not 50%. Elemental reflect damage, yeah. Cannot take reflected elemental damage. Whoa! That's pretty big. Hmm. Okay. Eh, interesting. Uh... Oh, okay, this is like bugged out. I guess increased damage. Liege of the Primordial! Your elemental golems are immune to elemental damage, same as it was. 20% increased damage for each summoned golem. 20% increased damage for each summoned golem. 25% increased effect of buffs granted by your golems for each summoned golem. Can summon up to one additional golem. Huh. Each summoned golem, so I guess it can be multiple of the same golem, and it's 20% increased damage. 25% increased effect of buffs granted by your golems for each summoned golem. So, basically it's stronger than what it was, honestly. It's just a stronger version of this. Well, kind of, because it's 75, unless... Yeah, we can summon one additional golem. Alright, that makes sense. Okay, Elemancer. 20% increased golem damage for each golem you have summoned. Increased golem damage for each golem you have summoned. You cannot be chilled or frozen while you have an ice golem summoned. Wow. You cannot be ignited while you have flame golem summoned. You cannot be shocked while you have lightning golem summoned. Wow. Can summon up to one additional golem. Pretty, pretty fucking good, honestly. That looks pretty good. It looks worth it. I wonder if they have more stuff for like minions, since they're actually making it the golem, dude. You can run so many golems now. It's pretty crazy. Makes a lot more sense to like actually run golems for like boss killings now and stuff like that. But maybe you get more. Gain 75% increased area of effect for five seconds. Gain 75% increased elemental damage for 5 seconds. These are consecutive. Wow. Well, that's a lot stronger than what it was before. Damn. Wasn't it like 50? 25 even. Damn. And there was a 2 second dead time. Wow. That's so much AoE. So basically you have 5 seconds of one, then 5 seconds of the other one. Pretty fucking good. 4% cast speed. Mastermind of Discord damage penetrates 25%. Cold or affected by Herald of Ice. Damage penetrates 25% fire while affected by Herald of Ash. Damage penetrates 25% lightning resist while affected by Herald of Thunder. 25% increased effect of Heralds on you. 25% reduced mana reservation of Herald skills. That's a weird change. Um, I guess they're trying to like promote Elementalist for attack-based classes too? I don't know, that's kind of weird. I thought the previous mechanic was quite unique. This one is a little bit iffy. 
I mean, I guess it's more accessible for more builds. The previous mechanic was kind of limiting. Because certain skill combinations just weren't that powerful. But... This basically means that... For the most part, you should be running crit with Elementalist. So you can, like, reserve and all that sort of stuff. Which really makes me think what the hell they're doing with Inquisitor. Uh, a little bit up in the air. It's a strong note, don't get me wrong, just... It's an odd change, considering, like, these things too. I don't know, it's a little bit weird. Uh, Shaper of Desolation. Gain Chilling Conflex for 4 seconds. Gain Shocking, Ignite, Gain Chilling, Shock, and Ignite Conflex for 2 seconds. So, zero t changes? Wait. Yeah, they haven't changed it at all. Okay, I thought like every 14 seconds. Okay. Yeah, 4, 4, 12, 14. Okay. Uh, beacon... Wait, did these always have chance to freeze? Oh, I didn't even know. Oh, 3%. Now they're 5? Yeah, now they're 5. Good. It's a good thing. Beacon of Ruin. Elemental ailments caused by your skills spread to other nearby enemies, which means that it's prolif, right? The same way it was. Chills from your hits always slow by at least 10%. 20% increased effect of non-damage ailments on enemies. Shock from hits always increase damage taken by at least 20%. <sighs> okay, very conflicted. <laughs> um, so we are supposed to be non-crit. Essentially. I mean, this does still works with crit, but... I like the Golem changes, I like Paragon of Calamity, I like like the middle changes, but Beacon of Ruin and Mastermind of Discord I'm a little bit conflicted about. They're powerful nodes, but will they really be able to like outgrow the strength of just the crit meta? I gotta see Inquisitor really to make a full judgment on this. We shall see. For now, I'd say that's about what we know. Alright, let's see Deadeye. Rapture. Attacks of 25% chance to cause bleeding. 40% critical strike multiplier against bleeding enemies. For 80% increased critical strike chance against bleeding enemies. Moving while bleeding doesn't cause you to take extra damage. Gain plus 30 life when you hit a bleeding enemy. Isn't it just a 30 life then? Yeah. It's literally plus 30 life when you hit a bleeding enemy. Okay. Alright, Gathering Wind. Since this is the only separate note... Plus 1,000 evasion rating while you have Tailwind. If you've used this skill recently, you and nearby allies have Tailwind. 10% increased effect of Tailwind on for, on you for each skill you've used recently, up to 100%? There we go. Tailwind makes you 10% faster. Oh. That's pretty powerful, honestly. For two points? 1,000 evasion rating? And it affects allies too? That's... That's pretty good. A little bit confusing, that's pretty good. I mean, 20%, it's not like it's completely sustainable since it's only recently, right? But... It definitely promotes the zoom zoom. The zoom zoom, zoom, zoom lifestyle. Yeah, these nodes... Projectile damage. Accuracy rating, okay. Powerful precision. Another two-pointer. Projectile spears three... Additional? <laughs> what? what does that mean? Wait, what? 14. Yeah, additional. <laughs> Why does it say a do to e back targets? Uh, okay. Projectiles have 100% increased critical strike chance against targets they pierce. Uh, okay. Projectiles pierce all nearby targets. Uh, that was here, and this was the return one. Hmm. 
So no more uh, return to you after hitting targets. Okay, I was kind of hoping that you're going to make something interesting with that. So let's see how this traverses. So next we've got like a middle node, which is far shot. Okay, we can just go over it. 30% increased projectile speed and you've got far shot. Far shot means that projectiles, uh, projectile attacks, attacks specifically, gain damage as they travel further, dealing up to 30% more attack damage with hits to targets. And uh, this has also been recently buffed. And by recently, I mean like two years ago. So it's actually pretty powerful. Kind of the same way uh, Point Blank is pretty strong right now. This is like a middle note. And from here we can branch out to either this or this. Apparently this doesn't have a name. I guess it is Endless Munitions still. 200% accuracy rating. 50% increased area of effect. Skills fire and an additional projectile. Okay. 5% attack speed, 10% increased projectile damage, skills chain plus one times, projectiles deal 10% more damage for each remaining chain. Wow, more damage for each remaining chain. Uh... <sighs> Honestly, both of these are a little bit underwhelming. I mean, far shot, ricochet, and gathering wins alongside powerful precision i can see that like being pretty pretty okay gain as extra chaos per chain works on magma orb well if that works then yeah that's pretty crazy i mean i guess you get gathering wins ricochet this doesn't do anything for you except the projectile speed. And apparently I missed this. 10% mm. increased attack speed, 30% increased projectile damage, accuracy rating is doubled. 100% increased blink arrow and mirror arrow cooldown recovery speed. It's two seconds, right? I don't know. Gathering wins seems great. Rapture always was a decent node. Powerful Precision is pretty strong, honestly. Uh, yeah. Skills fire and additional projectile. I feel like Scion is just gonna beat this out. Fire shot, uh, far shot. I mean, I understand their decision, but. Maybe it would be better if this was like 20%, but it would be just increased projectile uh, damage, not projectile attack damage. And then Ricochet. I don't know, so situational. I mean, it makes it, it makes it so that it justifies a lot of things. I'm sure you can make it work with enough damage and certain like... Bow setups and maybe even like spell setups, but... I don't know, very situational, it seems like. It seems like one of those things that if you can make it work, it's super powerful. Kind of like Champion, where Champion also is like, kind of, eh. But then, if you, if you really make it work, then it works better than a lot of things that are like immediately obvious for working. I think we'd have to put some more thought into it. It's, it's okay. Alright, let's see. I was expecting with this that they're just gonna trash the leech and then later on they're gonna buff the leech and then rework leech. And not really touch much else. Maybe like minor nerfs with Slayer, but let's see. Overwhelm. 100% increased stun duration on enemies. Cannot be stunned. Cannot be stunned? Stun duration... Just global? Your damaging hits always stun enemies that are in full life. Yeah. 20% chance to double stun duration. Whoa. Damn. That's pretty powerful. It cannot be stunned. Damn, that's a good that's a good freaking node. Uh, 
These are still two-handed weapons and attack speed is still global. Headsman, 20% more damage if you've killed recently, 20% increased area of effect if you've killed recently. Cannot take reflect reflective, reflective physical damage. So they changed it from 50% to uh, 100 and they moved it. Oh, and it's 20 instead of 15 too. Hmm, okay. I'm cool with that. Bane of Legends, move behind. Gain also for 20 seconds when you kill uh, a rare or unique enemy. Kill enemies that have 20% lower life when you hit by your skills. Well, they didn't change it, they just switched them around. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. It, it makes sense. I like this. Less less power for Slayer early on. It was It was a little bit stupid. Maybe they won't nerf Sunder now. So, so far, we were fine. Uh, this seems to be the same. Wait. 3% less damage to surrounding targets? Was this... I didn't even, even know that this was here. Wasn't this removed from melee splash? I didn't even know that this still had the less damage, what? <laughs> I I thought they removed that a long time ago. <laughs> actually, <laughs> uh, okay. Well, that that's great. A little bit. <laughs> I thought this was good. the less damage was already removed a long time ago. But all right. Okay. Endless hunger. You're immune to bleeding while leeching. Twenty percent overkill damage is at least his life. Point two, point two, fourteen. No attack speed makes sense. Point two, point two. Brutal fervor, hundred percent increase life leech per second. Thirty percent increase damage while leeching. Life leech uh, effects are not removed on full life. Okay, thirty percent increase damage while leeching, and they move the stun over here. Hmm. Yeah, so very minor changes. Uh, they didn't nerf the leech. So, leech is getting nerfed, boys. Uh, in general. Or, uh, sorry, ner leech is getting buffed. So, that's a that's an interesting thought. I mean, they did seem to make leech more available across, cl across classes. Uh, yeah. Leech buff. I thought I thought they're gonna wait with the leech buff. I thought they're gonna temporarily nerf this and then buff leech later on when they have more time. But no, apparently they're they're going in. Like I'm I'm thinking what sort of Slayer situation. Like the only situation where I can see Slayer actually being nerfed through these changes are basically caster Slayers. Because attack slayers use movement abilities anyway. So it's like you just don't pick up overwhelm, you don't have the stun, and you just use Combs Roots because you don't need the sockets for anything else anyway. And it's so easy to get like a weapon swap for whatever setup you need for single target for like every attack based ability. And so, yeah, the only thing that I can see really is a little bit weaker for leveling, which is a great thing. And then, because uh, it's already too strong and it's probably going to remain too strong, because even if they would, like, nerf Sunder into the ground, you've still got, you know, Cleave and Frostblades and all this shit is just so strong. So, yeah, Caster, Caster Slayers might be a little bit upset, but I've seen many use, like, Whirling Blades and stuff like that, so would they really care as much? I don't know. All right, Occultist. Very interested in this one. So let's see what they're trying to do here. Still energy shield. Power charge duration. Forbidden power. 5% increased area of effect per power charge. 5% increased spell power per power charge. You get a power charge after you spend a total of 200 mana, plus one to maximum power charges. Oh boy. 5% increased area of effect per power charge. With the new AoE? That's pretty good.
that's a lot better than this piece of shit. <laughs> I can tell you that much. Uh, Wicked Ward, 100% maximum energy, energy shield, uh, recharge is not interrupted by damage if recharge began recently. No changes there. 150 maximum energy shield, I think this was 100 before on this, right? Yeah, okay. So they moved it. Oh, no, wait, they just added it. Okay. They didn't move it, they just added 150 maximum energy shield. 1% of energy shield regenerated per second for each enemy. You or your minions have killed recently up to 30%. Cannot be stunned while you have energy shield. Cannot be stunned while you have energy shield? I mean, they capped it, they put it at a maximum of 30%. Wow. This note is really freaking powerful. It's interesting that they added you or your minions. I'm excited to see what the hell happens further. Void Beacon. Oh, really? You left it at this generic shit? They did such a cool thing with like splitting these up and stuff. Uh, I don't know. Profane Bloom. Your curse can apply to hexproof enemies. Cursed enemies you or your minions kill have a 25% chance to explode in a quarter of their maximum life is chaos. Hmm. They buffed the damage on it? I mean, I guess. The 10% increased damage, that's a multiplier, it didn't really make sense. Maybe they added it further, because Malediction used to be a really shitty node. Your curse can apply to hexproof enemies, that's pretty big. 25%, the 5% buff is pretty big too. They took away the 10% multiplier. Um, what I was hoping they are going to do with Profane Bloom is make it so that your curses uh, cursed enemies, or enemies cursed recently that you or your minions kill have a 25% chance to explode. That's kind of what I hoped for. And then obviously if the mob is cursed continuously, then that persists. But if you have like a blasphemy and you run through a pack, and those mobs are no longer cursed, that for four more seconds they would still, uh, you know, be able to blow up. But yeah, I was kind of hoping that they are going to do that, but they... Haven't really. Check minor notes. Oh. Effective curses. Great point. Thanks, I didn't see that. Enemies can have one additional curse. 15% increased effect of your curses when you kill an enemy. For each curse on that enemy, gain 8% of non-chaos damage is extra chaos damage for 4 seconds. Enemies you curse have malediction. Enemies with malediction deal 10% reduced damage and take 10% increased damage. Okay, yeah, so they did spice it up with the 10% being moved to Malediction. Uh, so yeah, 25% curse effect globally on Occultist. For each curse on that enemy, gain 8% of non-chaos damage, just extra chaos damage for 4 seconds. It's not as significant as it looks, but it definitely helps out, especially if you're looking to leech. Yeah, uh, Vile Bastion, man. Vile Bastion is pretty fucking crazy. It was crazy before, but now even more so. I like... I wish they did a little bit more with Profane Bloom. I understand that they were trying to indicate Malediction. I like that it's more indicative that you're supposed to be using Curses. I don't like how Void Beacon is still <laughs> resident sleeper, and I like how Forbidden Power is a genuine choice. Interesting. Alright, Trickster. Trickster will tell us more about Occultus than Occultus itself, I think. Alright, I, I like this. This looks cool. But, yeah, I do think Trickster, Trickster will tell us a lot about Mr. Occultist here. Let's maybe start with this. 
Second Caspian Evasion. Alright, so these nodes remain crazy as they did before. Ghost Dance is here now. Okay. 40% increase attack and cast speed if energy shield has started recently. If energy shield recharge has started recently. Okay. 20% more chance to evade while on full energy shield. 10% chance to dodge attacks and spells while you have energy shield. Okay. 10% increased movement speed while you have energy shield. Wow. <laughs> uh, Ghost Dance is crazy <laughs> for a two-pointer. Uh, damn. Yeah. Escape Artist. 5% to evasion rating per one maximum energy shield on the helmet. What? <laughs> That's crazy. Plus one to maximum energy shield per six evasion rating on body armor? <laughs> what? <laughs> Uh, what? Cannot be stunned if you haven't been here re hit recently. Cannot be stunned if you haven't been recently. Been hit recently, okay. 8% reduced damage taken if you haven't been hit recently. Okay, escape artist is really good. <laughs> <laughs> Weave the arcane, 25% increased maximum mana, movement skills cost no mana, 20% increased attack and cast speed if you've used a movement skill recently, 25% increased maximum mana, movement skills cost no mana, 20% increased attack and cast speed if you've used a movement skill recently. Why does this have so much more stuff on it? 20% chance to recover, 10% of maximum mana when you use a skill. 6% reduced damage taken for 6 seconds after spending 200 mana. Wait, they move these two together? Yeah. Can't read chat, you guys are spoiling too much. Swift Killer! 50% chance to gain power and frenzy charge, 5%. Okay, so Swift Killer's. Uh, the same. Oh, is the website wrong? Seven. Oh, okay, it is changed. Uh, the guy wrote it wrong on the website. Huh. Well, that's pretty crazy. Harness the Void. Your kids have a 20% 20 per 20 chance to gain 50% of non-chaos damage as extra chaos damage. Wait, what? Your hits have 20% chance to gain 50% of non-chaos damage as extra chaos damage. Your hits have 15% chance to gain 100% of non-chaos damage as extra chaos damage? Your hits have 10% chance to gain 200% of non-chaos damage as extra chaos damage? What? How is this a real node? Okay, this must have some sort of like really weird... Uh... This has to have some sort of really weird way it rolls or something. It can't be... It probably only has one roll for like... Can it have a single roll? It must either roll once, or... Like, if it lands on 10, it's 10. If it lands between 10 and 15, then it's that. If it lands between 15 and 20, then it's that, right? And then anything else that it lands on, it doesn't do anything. Like, I think that's how it's gonna roll. Like, 80% of the time, it's not gonna do anything, right? Like, it's... It's gated behind rolls. But even then, for single target, even if it would roll like that, that would still be... like a lot of damage. 
It's legit 45% more damage on average and 90% if you have co if you have conversion full. No, there's no way. It just can't be. It must be something weird with the rolls. This is way too crazy. For two points? I don't know. I need a clarification on this. I don't believe they would release a node like this. I don't think it's 45% chance to do something. Anyway, well, let's check out this node now. This is the other side. Patient Reaper. 50% increased damage over time. Recover 2% of maximum life on kill. Recover 2% of maximum energy shield on kill. Recover 4% of maximum mana on kill. 70% increased recovery rate of life, mana, and energy shield if you've killed an enemy affected by your damage over time recently. Well, this has also received the buff. Yeah, it's 50% over 30. 70% and it's got maximum life on kill now or maximum on kill in general Yeah, patient reaper big buff. I'm su I'm surprised man that they're doing all this stuff to trickster I thought trickster is pretty good already. All right, and the last node which is between the We definitely don't understand this node to its fullest slash. It's getting changed. What the fuck is this and patient reaper is prolonged pain prolonged pain 20% increased skill effect duration, 10% reduced damage taken from damage over time, 20% increased poison duration, 15% more damage over time. Uh, sure. I mean, skill effect duration is cool. It doesn't work on poison anymore, so they added like an additional poison duration to it. Reduce damage taken from over time is great, I guess. I guess they want more people to play RF with this or something. The 50% more damage over time, yeah. Okay, I don't know what the fuck hard as the void is, honestly. Swift Killer, I don't see why they needed to buff it, but I'm okay with it, I guess. Weave the Arcane, basically two strong nodes previously, one situational and one very powerful made into one, which is, again, surprising. Maybe we're anticipating a MOM nerf or something, or it's just like that, and now you just play this. Ghost Dance is pretty freaking good. Uh, Escape Artist is pretty freaking good. Patient Reaper, again, is pretty freaking good. Prolonged Pain, eh, okay. And then Harness the Void is just stupid. <laughs> I don't know, there's something wrong with this node. I don't believe that this works exactly the way they worded it. Uh, what does this do for Occultist? I think Occultist keeps its integrity. I think as a damage over time build, Trickster is still more powerful. It seems like Occultus is supposed to be the more defensive, like, situationally defensive build over Trickster. Um, and yeah, there's not as much pressure on, like, Dots, but then like if this nodes works the way it says it does then it's like <laughs> I, don't, I don't know it kind of kind of doesn't make sense to me I was expecting that this is going to be like okay. I get it. This is this is like the The dot the thing that can still play dots, but it's like energy shield And then it's got some hard hitting stuff on it too and explosions are cool Alright, I can see that, and probably Trickster is going to be the, like, the more damage over type type of thing. Oh yeah, Patient Reaper, makes sense, you know, MOM, yeah, that makes sense too. Like, this is the MOM guy, that's the Energy Shield guy. Alright, Swift Killer, whatever. Harness the Void! <laughs> what? 